trust fund baby, Elon Musk, has said that if he were to buy Twitter, he would allow Donald back on. Now let's go back for a second and remember why Donald was kicked off Twitter, a private platform in the first place. Because he was spreading a big lie about the 2020 election, which he lost by almost 8 million votes, and he was inciting an insurrection. Let's not pretend that Musk's maneuver isn't part of a larger project. And also, let's not pretend that this has anything to do with the First Amendment. As I said, Twitter is a private platform. The First Amendment does not apply to it. It has its own terms of service. It can get kick anybody off Twitter if they don't like that person's behavior. It's that simple. So what is Elon Musk doing? I mean, I have to be honest with you. Part of me doesn't care, but I guess I have to because for reasons that beggar the imagination, he has been allowed to amass a fortune so enormous that he can expend $46 billion to buy a social media platform as if it's just another toy. First of all, <laughs> the whole thing just reminds us that nobody should be that rich. And by the way, he's not self-made. Um, but it all it, it should remind us anyway that one person should not be able to take over the narrative in this way. Is he going to buy Twitter? I don't know. It's not a done deal. It may never be. If he does, is he going to let Donald back on? I don't know. It shouldn't matter to the rest of us because we are not to cede any territory. I think it's much more likely that he's just doing this to generate publicity. I mean, I'm talking about it and maybe I shouldn't be, but there's a good chance that he's using it to set himself up for some political future in America, which is kind of the last thing we need a, um, a white guy who inherited a fortune and kind of buys his way through life. So what I would say to you is as far as possible, ignore him just as we should have ignored Donald a long time ago, because by not ignoring him, we grant him power, and then that power becomes realized in ways that are the stuff of nightmares. Jen Psaki's tenure as White House press secretary is coming to an end, uh, which is bad news because she's so incredibly good at her job. She is one of the best, if not the best, press secretary I've ever seen. She kind of uh, reminds me of C.J. Craig from West Wing. But do not despair because her replacement is the eminently qualified Karine Jean-Pierre. And not only is Jean-Pierre qualified, she's also breaking history twice by being the first black press secretary and the first openly LGBTQ press secretary. So thank you, Jen Psaki, for your incredible work and for putting Peter Ducey in his place day after day after day. That must have been incredibly exhausting, although probably fun too. And congratulations to Karine Jean-Pierre. Uh, the Biden administration has created something called the Disinformation Governance Board. It sounds sort of Orwellian, but it's an absolutely necessary innovation because there is so much disinformation out there. It is having a massive impact on the American electorate, and the mainstream media seem to be completely incapable of countering uh, the conspiracy theories and lies that are constantly swirling around. So this is a really good move. Um, I hope they get it up and running and uh, staff it properly because we live in a country right now where um, people, like significant segments of the Republican Party, actually think that elected Democrats are pedophiles and groomers, and this has to stop. Cannot overstate how dangerous this is. You may have heard that the religious fanatic majority on the Supreme Court is determined to make women and pregnant people in this country second-class citizens with absolutely no rights over their own bodies, with no rights when it comes to deciding whether or not or even when they want to be pregnant. 
it's hard to overstate how terrifying the situation is. The draft opinion we saw was leaked, so we don't know for sure if it is the final version, but states are already chomping at the bit to craft increasingly draconian and punitive laws that will, for example, make it illegal to have abortifacients, that's the medicine women take uh, to have an abortion as opposed to going to a clinic to get the surgical procedure. They're making it illegal to have women receive those in the mail. They are making it a charge of homicide if a woman aborts even a one hour old embryo, they are making it illegal for women to cross state lines so that they can go to a state that where abortion is still legal. This is, this is dark, dark, dark stuff. So it should surprise absolutely nobody that women and their allies are taking to the streets. Because if this goes through, then Women no longer have the same rights as men in this country. And it is very, very difficult to get rights back once they've been stolen from you. Some of those protests are happening outside of the Supreme Court justices' houses, to which I say, too fucking bad. You want privacy? You want privacy. Well, guess what? So do the 150 or 60 or 70 million of us who you are relegating to second-class citizenship. Uh, not surprisingly, I guess, Democrats in the Senate were on board with the Republicans uh, to craft this unanimous, I don't even know what it is, a legislation or whatever, to make it illegal to protest outside of a Supreme Court justice's house. But the Supreme Court, by the way, made it perfectly legal on First Amendment grounds for people to protest outside of the homes of abortion providers. This is a situation where being polite, being compliant, asking for permission, those things no longer apply. And the Democrats in the Senate and in the House need to act like that's the case. Justice Alito, Clarence Thomas, Brett fucking Kavanaugh, Neil Gorsuch, Amy Coney Barrett, they do not deserve respect. They do not deserve privacy. They do not deserve one moment's peace if this is how they are treating more than half of the American people. They are going to get women killed. They are going to destroy lives and they are going to do it happily. Let's make sure they have to do it publicly. In they really have their fingers on the pulse of what matters in this country. Two quick things. First of all, Susan Collins called the cops because somebody had the audacity to draw on the sidewalk with chalk. And the house, I, can't, I actually can't believe I'm saying this. It's, very, it's hard for me to believe this is happening. For the first time in 50 years, the house, yes, the United States Congress is going to hold hearings on UFOs, because it's not like there's anything really important going on. Jesus Christ, guys, get your act together. <laughs> I can't, I just, I can't. <laughs> ¶¶